David Horowitz was born in Forest Hills, New York on January 10, 1939, the year of the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact which shattered the illusions of many communists and members of the progressive left. But Horowitz's schoolteacher parents, Blanche and Phil, remained steadfast in their commitment to the party and its Marxist version of a liberated society. They had met in communist meetings in the early 1930s and had engaged in what turned out to be a lifelong political romance, thinking of themselves as secret agents of the Soviet future. After studying English literature at Columbia University and the University of California at Berkeley, Horowitz became an editor of a new magazine called Root and Branch, which published essays embodying the political vision of the new left. A few years later, in 1968, Horowitz became an editor at Ramparts Magazine, the New Left's largest and most successful publication with a circulation of a quarter million readers. By 1969, the New Left was disintegrating into feudal acts of revolutionary violence. Disturbed at the direction the movement was taking but not yet able to contemplate a future as an outsider, Horowitz later said of his predicament, I pretty well realized, even at that time, that you couldn't really remake the world as the left intended without totalitarian coercion, but it was much more difficult to accept the consequences of that realization. He thought he had found an answer to the political paralysis of the early 1970s when he grew close to Huey Newton, the leader of the Black Panther Party. In September 1974, he recruited Rampart's bookkeeper, Betty Van Patter, to maintain the accounts of a tax-exempt foundation he had created for the Panthers. In February of the following year, Betty Van Patter's bludgeoned body was found adrift in San Francisco Bay. The police were convinced she had been murdered by members of the Black Panther Party, but local prosecutors were unable to bring an indictment and the federal government under siege from the left steered clear of this crime, as did the press, which had largely bought into the notion that the Panthers had been targeted for destruction by racist law enforcement. Disillusioned by the murder of his friend, Horowitz began what would become a ten-year transformation from theorist of the left to its worst enemy. In a vignette that Horowitz wrote at the request of the New York Times Magazine, Horowitz recounted the stages of his metamorphosis. Being at the center of a heroic myth inspired passions that informed my youthful passage and guided me to the middle of my adult life. But then I was confronted by a reality so inescapable and harsh that it shattered the romance for good. In November 1984, Horowitz turned another corner. He cast his first Republican ballot for Ronald Reagan. On March 17, 1985, he and his colleague Peter Collier wrote a front-page story for the Sunday magazine of the Washington Post titled, Lefties for Reagan, explaining their votes for the Republican candidate. In 1997, Horowitz published his groundbreaking memoir, Radical Son. This memoir provided an account of Horowitz's life and described the intellectual process behind his political change of heart. Radical Son is an eloquent and riveting narrative, providing a cogent moral and intellectual basis for the changes it describes. Since the publishing of Radical Son, Horowitz has written countless other best-selling essays and books, including The Black Book of the American Left, a multi-volume set that explores the nature of the left and its agendas over a 30-year period. Horowitz is also the author of a book on the riots that followed the death of career criminal George Floyd in 2020, titled, I Can't Breathe, How a Racial Hoax is Killing America. His other bestsellers include Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America, The Professors, and Blitz, Trump Will Smash the Left and Win. In order to overcome the many obstacles he's faced, Horowitz created his own institutional base to carry on his work. In 1988, alongside his colleague Peter Collier, he founded the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Its online journal, Front Page Magazine, receives over one and a half million unique visitors a month. The creation of the Freedom Center also enabled Horowitz to speak at over 400 colleges and universities and to appear on well over a thousand radio talk shows and television programs. Through these efforts, Horowitz has been able to play a significant role in the battle of ideas. David Horowitz exemplifies the irritating and threatening reminder to tyranny that human freedom and the triumph of the human spirit 
can ultimately never be suffocated or suppressed. To quote academic and social critic Camille Pali, herself an independent leftist, David Horowitz is one of America's most original and courageous political analysts. As a scholar who regularly surveys archival material, I think that a century from now, cultural historians will find David Horowitz's spiritual and political odyssey paradigmatic for our time. Someone who has traced the arc of David Horowitz's life cannot help but think that, despite all the efforts to silence him, he will ultimately be vindicated by history, and that the principles behind his work, to borrow from William Faulkner's famous words, will not only endure, but prevail. Trace the arc.